Hello mga ka Shine Bright! Welcome back to my channel. Naks mga channel, kala mo dami subscribers eh. But uh, on today's vlog guys, we're gonna talk about uh, Shengyan Visa. So basically how I uh, plan and prepare for uh, my Shengyan Visa and how I apply for it. So we're gonna talk about that and I'm just gonna hold the mic kasi may mga audible sounds sa background. And um, anyways, I actually prepare set of questionnaires here. Um, there are actually 13 of them. Okay, so medyo mahaba ba tong vlog na to guys. So manda kayo. So ano ba yung mga uh, questionnaires here that I prepare? So uh, there are 13 of them. So number one, what is a uh, Schengen visa? Number two, what are the Schengen area countries you can visit? Number three, how did I plan for my Schengen trip? Number four, where to submit or lodge application? Number five, how early can I apply for Schengen visa? Number six, what are the different type of visa? Number seven, what are the requirements needed? Number eight, how do I fill up the application form? Number nine, what happens on the day of your submission of visa application? Number ten, how long was the submission of application? Number eleven, how long before you can get the decision or get your passport back? Number 12, how do I interpret or read my Schengen visa? And number 12, or number 13, how much did I spend? Or how much did you spend? Okay, so yun, yun yung mga set of questionnaires, guys. And I'm gonna answer them based on how I also experience um, applying for my Schengen visa. But before I answer them, guys, I uh, just wanna say na lahat ng links na i-mention ko dito sa vlog na to, I'm gonna put it on the description or on the caption guys. So take time to read and also I'm gonna flash it on the screen so meron kayong uh, reference. Okay, so uh, let's proceed. So number one, what is uh, Shengyan Visa? Okay, so akala ko nung una guys, it's pronounced as Shenzhen. Pero I was corrected by my cousin na nagtatrabaho dun sa Europe. Um, bumisita siya dito last year and uh, sabi niya it's pronounced as Schengen. Okay, so my bad. Anyways, uh, Schengen visa guys is a type of visa which allows a uh, traveler or individual to enter the Schengen area for uh, tourism or business purposes for a total of 90 days for a short term visa or um, if you'd like to stay there longer then you have to apply for a long term visa. Yeah. Number two, what are the Schengen area countries you can visit? Okay, so there are actually 26 uh, Schengen countries that you can uh, visit if you have a valid Schengen visa. And these are the uh, countries, guys, you can visit. Okay. So, um, if you have a uh, valid uh, Philippine passport um, with at least six months validity, guys, and you're planning to go to, let's say, um, Spain... <laughs> Or Switzerland, or shall no Switzerland, or um, gusto nyo mo nang uh, magpalamig sa Iceland, okay? So uh, you are required to apply for Schengen visa, guys. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so third question in the list: How did I plan for my Schengen trip? Okay, so medyo nakaka uh, miss Q and A to no? but how did I plan? Okay, so the first thing that I did is I planned for my itinera uh, itinerary. So, um, tinanong ko mismo yung sarili ko, bakit ba? Bakit ba ako pupunta ng Europe? Ano bang gusto kong mapuntahan doon? Ano bang gusto kong makita? So, um, basically it all started guys because of uh, Meteor Garden. So, even before I went to uh, Taiwan for Meteor Garden guys, um, it's really my goal uh to visit Europe guys uh, since I was high school. Kasi dun sa uh, Meteor Garden guys, um, na-feature dun yung Sagrada Familia, yung Basilica of Sagrada Familia. And sobrang namang hanga actually si Sanchay dun. And ako rin, nung nakita ko yung church, parang wow, sobrang ganda. So sabi ko, um, one day I'd like to visit the church pag meron akong trabaho and nakapag-ipon na. I'm really gonna visit the church. And um, it was just last year, guys, that I, I was really decided na it's about time na isakatupan ko yung Europe dream ko, diba? Kasi medyo matagal-tagal na rin naman tayo nagtatrabaho, so at least patit na rin sa sarili. 
So last year lang, I was really decided to uh, go to Europe. And uh, yun, that's one of the reasons why I'd like to uh, visit uh, Barcelona um, to see the Sagrada Familia. And also, uh, as a Roman Catholic, guys, it's, um, it's my goal then to visit uh, St. Peter's Basilica. And uh, bucket list ko rin talaga na uh, mapuntahan or makita lahat ng uh, seven new wonders of the world. And one of those is the Colosseum in uh, Rome. And then makapagondola ride sa Venice. And um, of course, to see the ravishing Eiffel Tower. So I think uh, if you're coming from um, an Asian uh, country, guys, uh, one of your goals is to um, visit uh, Paris and to see the Eiffel Tower. Diba? Minado naman tayo dun. So ako din, it's, it's my goal to see the um, Eiffel Tower. So yun, I uh, list down all the countries that I'd like to visit and nagkaroon ako ng draft kung um, ano ba yung mga um, activities or attractions. So... Uh, that I can enjoy. So, through Klook, guys, I checked uh, ano yung mga attractions na yun, ano yung mga activities na pwede kong ma-enjoy. And then, uh, I checked through uh, booking.com kung uh, maging, uh, magkano yung magiging um, accommodations ko. So, maganda sa booking.com is uh, no prepayment needed. Meron silang option na ganun. And uh, you can check kung within city center lang yung magiging hostel nyo. So, ako, uh, what I uh, prefer is to stay on a hostel kasi it's a budget trip. Okay. And then, uh, actually, I uh, reserved for my accommodation uh, last year. I think it was the same month, September then. So, that's how long I actually plan for my trip, guys. It uh, took a year. So, yun, uh, through booking.com, I reserved for my um, accommodation. And then, um, I checked also kung maging, magkano magiging transportation ko. Uh, that includes uh, bus or trains. Let's say, magkano yung magiging pamasay ko for bus or trains if I'm coming from airport to my hostel. And I also checked kung ano yung magiging, or ano yung mga available cards um, na pwede kong bilhin para mas makatipid ako for my transportation. So, I really do research, guys. And then, um, after that, I check through a sky scanner kung magi- mag- magkano yung magiging um, airfare ko uh, just within the Schengen area. Like, for example, uh, magkano yung flight ticket from Barcelona to Rome or Venice to Paris. And I found out na the... Um, the earlier you book, guys, for your flight, the cheaper the price. Okay. So, I also check kung magkano yung round trip ticket from here in the Philippines to Europe and then uh, going back. Okay. And then, um, after that, um, I check kung ano ba yung uh, visa na kay- kailangan kong um, applyan. What are the requirements needed? And um, magkano ba yung aabutin ko just to gather all, your, uh, all those uh, documents and uh, lastly, magkano yung visa itself. Okay, so I uh, listed all down and then um, tinotal ko siya. And then I had an estimate uh, cost kung magkano yung um, iba budget ko for my trip. And then um, nagkaroon ako ng idea kung magkano yung maging uh, estimate cost for my uh, trip, guys. I started uh, saving up. Of course, if you have plans, you need to have actions then, di ba? So, yun, I start uh, saving up um, every month talagang I really budget my uh, monthly income, guys. And thanks God, talagang tinulungan niya ako na mabudget yung uh, monthly salary ko. And then, uh, three months before my travel date, guys, I make sure na kumpleto na lahat ng mga requirements that I need for my visa. And um, okay na yung savings ko. Um, I, I gather all the uh, documents and then I apply uh, my uh, visa through the VIA center. So, yeah, that's how I uh, plan for my Europe trip. Okay? So, number four, where to submit or lodge application. Okay, so there are actually three factors to consider. The first one is by main destination. So, let's say, for example, you're going to Europe and you'd like to visit just one country, let's say um, Spain. Then you have to apply to the uh, Spanish embassy. Number two, uh, first entry. So let's say uh, you're going there uh, and you'd like to uh, visit two countries with equal days, guys. Um, let's say um, Spain and Italy. 
then you have to consider your first entry. So, um, gusto nyong pumunta muna ng Spain, then you have to apply to the Spanish Embassy. But if you'd like to visit first um, Italy, then you have to apply your visa to the Italian Embassy. Okay. Number three is uh, in which country you will stay the longest. Okay. So, let's say multiple countries, just like my trip. My itinerary um, is uh, Spain for four days, five days in Italy, and France, uh, three days. So, that's a total of 12 days in multiple countries. But then, since I will be uh, staying the longest in Italy, then I, I have to apply my visa to the Italian embassy, guys. Okay. So, uh, if you're planning to go to uh, Europe and um, you will be staying the longest in Italy, then you can actually apply your uh, visa, guys, through the VIA Center. And then, yung VIA Center na yung magsasubmit nyo, or magsasubmit ng um, application nyo to the Italian Embassy. So, yung VIA Center, guys, they are located in um, Allegro Center, Chino Roses Avenue, Makati, 2284 Metro Manila, Philippines. So, you can try to um, Google them uh, or search them on Google Maps. And their operating hours is, op they're open daily from Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. except holidays. Submission of visa applications are accepted from Monday to Thursday from 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And on Friday, 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. So, maganda dito is no appointment needed. So, pwedeng walk-in um, applicants. Pero, kung meron kong inahabol na time, then you can actually uh, schedule for an appointment. Yung pick-up time nila or yung collection ng passport is from Monday to Friday, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. only. Okay? So, yun. Number five, how early can I apply for Schengen visa? Okay, so applicants are free to apply up to 90 days prior to your uh, date of travel, guys. So, ako, what I did is from the first day that I will set foot on the uh, Schengen area, guys, I counted 90 days backward. And then, yun, I apply for my visa. Number six, what are the different type of visa? Okay, so there's actually short-term visa and then there's long-term visa. So, for short-term visa, guys, these are the different type of visa. And for long-term visa, ayan, yun yung mga different type of long-term visa. But for the purpose of this vlog, uh, we will focus on short-term uh, tourist visa, which is uh, valid for 90 days. Okay. Number seven, what are the requirements needed? Okay, so you can actually uh, visit the Italian visa online link, guys. So I'll flash it on the screen. It's also on the description. Uh, so you can get the most reset or updated list of requirements. So what are the requirements that um, I submitted? So this is the checklist for tourist visa. Number one is um, entry visa application form. So, doon sa nabanggit kong um, link, guys, uh, doon yung makikita yung application form. And then, doon nyo rin i-fill up yung um, application form. Um, later on, we'll talk about how to uh, fill up the application form. Number two, uh, photo. One recent passport size or two by two standard photo with uh, white background. Ears should be exposed. So, kailangan nakalabas yung tenga with a uh, colored shirt or blouse. Okay. By the way, doon sa uh, photo, um, kailangan uh, nakadikit siya doon sa upper right corner ng uh, visa application nyo. So, hindi pwedeng naka-staple guys. Kailangan nakadikit. Number three, travel document. Old and current uh, valid passport uh, with uh, six months validity as required by the Philippines Bureau of Immigration. So, ako, ang pinasa ko is yung current uh, passport ko lang kasi wala naman akong old passport. And a uh, photocopy of biographical page, ng passport nyo, the last page of your uh, valid passport, previous visa, so kung meron kayo mga previous visa, like you've been to Japan or Korea, then you have to photocopy it. Ako wala naman kasi I've never been to a country which requires a uh, visa, guys. So ang pinasa ko is immigration stamps in all countries. So yung mga immigration stamp lang dun sa mga countries na nabisita ko na or napuntahan ko. Number four, proof of travel. So, complete itinerary. Uh, by the way, guys, um, 
I'll uh, put a links where you can actually download some sample templates like yung cover letter ko and then yung detailed itinerary ko na pinasa ko sa um, embassy para you can have an idea how to um, make it or how to construct it guys. So yun, uh, complete itinerary. So um, number two is yung confirmed uh, round trip uh, flight booking. Okay, so doon sa confirmed round trip uh, flight booking you guys, uh, the embassy doesn't really require you to purchase your actual ticket. Um, you can actually submit a um, flight reservation ticket, guys. So, ano ba yung flight reservation ticket? So, from the word itself, reserve. Diba? Reservation. So, um, i-reserve nyo lang yung uh, ticket nyo. And not all um, airlines provide or offer that, guys. So, you can get that actually from a, a uh, travel agency. Um, ang kailangan nyo lang babayaran is yung processing fee or yung service charge ng travel agency which uh, process your flight reservation ticket, guys. Now, I have a recommendation to you. Um, if you would like to get a flight reservation ticket, you can get it from Gazil Travel and Tours. So, uh, travel agency sila guys and um, one of the services that they offer is yung flight reservation ticket for your Schengen visa. So, meron silang uh, Facebook page. You can visit their fa uh, Facebook page and I really recommend them guys kasi uh, they're very accommodating, very responsive din sila sa uh, Facebook page nila. So, they really can assist you guys. And I actually uh, found out regarding about uh, Gazelle Travel and Tours through um, the poor travelers. So, yung poor travelers, guys, um, if you're a follower of poor travelers of Facebook, um, they're bloggers, and recently, uh, they started doing vlog na rin in uh, YouTube. Um, marami na silang nabisitang countries, guys, and meron silang blog. They talk about um, Schengen visa, how to apply for Schengen visa, and they mention about Gazelle Travel and Tours na if you'd like to get your flight reservation ticket, then you can avail it to uh, Gazil, guys. So, if pupunta kayo ng Europe and you will get a uh, flight reservation ticket, then you can avail it uh, through Gazil. So, I'll put the online form. Okay, I'll flash it on the screen. And again, nasa description din siya. You have to fill up the application form and then one of their representative will email you or will contact you regarding about your flight reservation ticket. So, um, yung processing nila for regular processing, it's 990 pesos. Uh, that includes three flights. And makukuha nyo yung reservation ticket nyo uh, within three to five working days. The uh, rush processing, let's say, um, kailangan nyo na talagang mag-submit ng um, visa application nyo. Nagmamadali kayo, kailangan nyo ng reservation flight ticket. Then you can avail for their uh, rush processing, uh, which is 1,590 pesos. That includes five flights. And makukuha nyo siya within 24 hours on weekdays um, and within 48 hours on weekends. Okay. So, uh, just make sure guys to inform um, Gazelle um, kung kailan yung submission of your application kasi kailangan lang inline yun sa reservation flight ticket nyo. Yung mga airlines, they have uh, different um, blocking period guys. So, make sure to inform them. Okay, so, um, ano ba? Uh, paano, uh, ano ba yung itsura ng um, flight reservation ticket? So, ganito yun guys. So, what I actually avail guys is the regular processing of 990 pesos that includes 3 flights. So, from Manila to Barcelona and then Venice to Paris then Paris back to Manila. So, ano ba yung itsura niya? So, ganito siya guys. So, sa taas, nandun yung pangalan ng uh, travel agency, Gazelle Travel and Tours. And then, on the upper right corner, andun yung DOT accredit accreditation number. So, dito nyo malalaman kung talagang um, legit ba yung travel agency. And then, on this side is the uh, booking ID, yung booking date, and then yung itinerary of your uh, trip guys, uh, including the layover. And then sa baba, yung passenger details. Then your passport details. And then kung ano yung status ng uh, flight reservation nyo. Yung payment details. And then um, kung ano yung mga inclusions sa uh, flight nyo. So para talaga siyang actual ticket na naka-reserve. So uh, the good thing about it is um, automatically ma makakancel na siya if hindi nyo ipoproceed yung uh, reservation ticket nyo. But if you'd like to proceed it, then you have to 
um, inform the travel agency para uh, mabook nila yung flight nyo. So, the reason why uh, the embassy doesn't really require you to purchase your actual ticket, guys, kasi mahal. Mahal yung uh, ticket, guys. And if in case hindi ma-approve yung um, visa nyo, then at least hindi kayo gumasos sa malaki for your uh, ticket, guys. Okay, only the reservation ticket. And another option, guys, is actually uh, through Cathay uh, Pacific. So, if in case yung uh, preferred a uh, airline nyo is Cathay Pacific, they have actually an option to hold your fare for 72 hours. So, pwede nyo uh, reserve yung ticket nyo for 72 hours. Meron silang ganong option. And then, uh, meron siyang uh, reservation fee for $15. Um, dollars. So, you will have uh, time uh, to think if um, ibuproceed nyo ba yung ticket or um, reserve it for the meantime. So, meron silang i-email na reservation uh, ticket nyo. Then, you can print it out and pwedeng yun na yung i-submit nyo sa um, embassy. So, when I applied for my UK visa, yun yung um, ginawa ko guys. Hindi na ako nagpa um, reserve through uh, Gazelle. So, yun na yung ginawa kong um, or yun yung kinuha kong uh, reservation ticket and then yun yung pinasa ko sa embassy. Okay. Fifth on the checklist for tourist visa requirements is proof of financial means of the um, applicant. So, you can submit copy of real estate property or title deed. So, ako, yung pinasa ko guys is the certificate title nitong bahay. And, um, if in case meron kayong uh, OCR na sasakyan nyo, you can also submit that. So, these uh, documents, guys, uh, plus factor siya sa visa application nyo. Um, but it doesn't mean na kung di kayo makasabit ng ganito, uh, automatically rejected na yung visa nyo. When I say plus factor, parang uh, pogi points siya sa visa application nyo, guys. Kasi uh, this would really uh, convince the embassy na meron at meron kayong babalikan dito sa Pilipinas kasi may mga properties kayo. Okay, so yon. And then, um, bank certification supported by bas passbook or statement of account. Six months account history for frequent um, traveler. So, ako, ang pinasa ko guys is yung uh, bank certificate from BPI, kasi doon yung payroll ko, um, supported by uh, bank statements. Uh, kaya lang ng uh, bank guys is yung three months na statement of account history. So, ang ginawa ko is... Um, I get a uh, bank statement for three months and then yung previous months pa from December up to March, um, I get it from uh, BPI uh, mobile apps. So, doon sa BPI mobile apps, guys, para mas makatipid din kayo, you can also uh, save and print yung um, statement of account um, history nyo. Merong uh, certain period wherein you can print your uh, statement of account. So, pwede yon In honor yon ng uh, embassy. Okay. So, you might be asking uh, magkano ba dapat yung laman ng account para mas ma-approve yung uh, visa, guys. So, to answer your question, guys, there's really no specific amount na nire-require ng embassy para ma-approve yung visa nyo. Uh, based on my experience, um, it really depends on your um, itinerary. When I say it depends on your itinerary, if it's a budget trip or a luxurious trip. So, uh, to give you an idea, guys, um, what I did is, like I've said, I um, I listed all the countries that I'd like to visit and then um, I check kung ano ba yung mga attractions or ano ba yung mga activities na pwede kong enjoy and I check it through Klook and then uh, plus the accommodation, so through booking.com, um, like I've said, uh, it's going to be a budget trip, so I preferred to stay in a uh, hostel. So, tinotal ko magkano yung magiging um, accommodation ko, and then uh, transportation, so plus transportation, so that includes yung buses, trains, and then um, plus the uh, airfare. So, through Skyscanner, nagkaroon ako ng idea kung magkano ba yung airfare ticket just within um, Europe and then magkano yung round trip uh, airfare um, from Philippines to Europe and then going back. And then um, plus uh, daily budget guys or daily allowance ko. So, um, I had an estimate of at least 6,000 for my daily budget. So, 12 days ako doon. So, 12 days times 6,000. So, I included that 
on my uh, budget plus yung uh, visa processing. So, I total uh, I total it and then nagkaroon ako ng estimate cost for my uh, trip. Then, I make sure na yun yung nagre-reflect sa statement of account ko, guys. And then, I make sure also that on top of that, I will have enough money that will be left on my account para I can convince the embassy na pagbalik ko dito sa Pilipinas, I still have enough money that will be left on my account and hindi ako zero balance. So, it's really just a matter of uh, putting yourself on the visa officer's uh, shoes or it's like putting yourself on the embassy's uh, shoes, guys, or sandals or boots or uh, whatever. So, parang ilalagay nyo rin yung sarili nyo na kung kayo yung visa officer and you're looking at your um, application, how would you convince them, di ba, na aprubahan yung uh, visa nyo um, wherein um, ito yung itinerary nyo at ito lang yung laman account nyo. Oh, no! So, like I've said, it all depends on your itinerary if it's a budget trip or a luxurious trip. Just make sure if it's a luxurious trip, you have that um, enough money on your account, guys, for that luxurious travel. Okay, so yun. And then, um, on the bank statement also, guys, make sure na dun sa statement of account history nyo, proportion siya sa monthly um, income nyo. Okay, you will pass or you will submit a, like I've said, six to eight months um statement of account history. So, hindi pwedeng maglalagay kayo ng isang bagsakan na pera, like maglalagay kayo ng 200,000 uh, sa account nyo, just to really uh, convince the embassy na meron kayo uh, kalaking, ganun kalaking pera. So, no guys. Doon pa lang sa statement of account history nyo, malalaman ng embassy kung meron ba talaga kayong pera, meron ba kayong sinesave, meron ba kayong iniipon sa account nyo, and kaya nyo ba talaga yung travel nyo. Okay. So, uh, make sure na proportion siya sa monthly income nyo. Uh, let's say, for example, um, kumikita kayo ng um, 50,000 a month. So, sabang laki, no? But, uh, hindi ganun kalaki yung kinikita ko, guys, uh, how I wish. So, let's say, uh, ganun yung monthly income nyo, minus your daily expenses. So, meron na kayo dapat na tabi or na save doon. So, men, uh, make sure na yun yung nagre-reflect sa statement of account nyo. Kasi, Kung ganito lang yung income nyo and sobrang laki nung nasa account nyo guys, it will draw a question to the embassy side na bakit sobrang laki nung nasa account mo wherein ganito lang naman yung monthly income nyo. Unless uh, you have other sources of income guys, uh, meron kayong mga sideline or meron kayong um, other businesses, just make sure na meron or you can provide necessary documents to the embassy para... Um, Kung ikakwestiyon man kayo, at least you can defend your side na um, aside from this job, I also have other sources of income or uh, businesses. Okay? Otherwise, uh, magiging questionable dun sa, yun sa um, embassy guys na sobrang laki yung nasa um, account nyo or sa statement of account nyo. And then, ganito lang naman yung monthly income nyo. Okay? So, make sure proportion siya. Alright? So, yun. Okay, and then, aside from the bank certificate and uh bank statements. You can also uh, provide, kung may mga international credit cards kayo, you can also provide yung um, statement of account ng international credit cards nyo. Make sure that you will provide a uh, six-month statement of accounts of your credit card, guys. Kasi nung nag-apply ako, uh, I submitted just one month um, statement of account. So, yun. So, make sure na um, you will provide six, at least six months uh, statement of account of your international uh, credit cards. And then, you can also provide, um, if employed kayo, you can provide your uh, pay slips, um, at least six months pay slip din, para they can uh, check kung uh, magkano ba talaga sinasahod nyo every month. Okay? So, yun. Next, number six on the checklist for tourist visa. Uh, requirements is uh, proof of um, occupation. Okay. So, uh, if you're employed, you can submit your certificate of uh, employment and approve leave of absence and income tax uh, or ITR. Okay. So, ako, uh, since I'm employed, what I submitted is yung certificate of employment and then yung approve uh, leave of absence call from the company and also my ITR. For applicants who are government staff, approved travel authority, 
if uh, self-employed like uh, you have your own business guys then you have to submit your business license or permits BIR registration and financial statement and income tax return for professional license card if you have then you can uh, provide yung PRC uh, card nyo and for students uh, certificate of enrollment and approved leave of absence um, if traveling during school year okay seventh on the checklist for tourist visa requirements is health insurance so travel insurance with coverage of at least 30,000 euros with 15 days allowance beyond travel period for um, expenses for emergency hospitalization and uh, repatriation expenses and it should be valid throughout the Schengen area to be chosen only among those um, offered by the Schengen accredited insurance companies. So dun sa nabanggit kong um, link kanina, uh, the VIA or Italian Visa online link, uh, makikita nyo dun um, kung ano yung mga accredited uh, Schengen um, travel insurance companies guys. So ako ang napili ko is yung uh, MAFRE travel insurance. So I'll put the link uh, on the description and I'll flash it on your screen if you want to uh, check uh, MAFRE travel insurance website. So napili ko yung MAFRE travel insurance kasi mas mura siya among all those travel insurance kasi I compared yung uh, prices nila and so far yung MAFRE travel insurance yung um, pinakamura and uh, cashless service din siya. I recommend Mafre Travel Insurance guys kasi they're very accommodating then, very responsive on uh, their um, email guys. When you email them, they will really answer your question if you have inquiries. So, um, again, I, I recommend Mafre Travel Insurance. Okay? Number 8 on the checklist for tourist visa is availability of accommodation. Hotel booking under the name of the traveler. So ako, uh, what I did is, like I've said, I, I reserve my accommodation through booking.com. I actually reserve um, uh, for a hostel kasi, like I've said, it's gonna be a budget trip. And I reserve my accommodation uh, since last year actually, guys. So I reserve ko na siya kasi I found out that um, the earlier you uh, reserve for your uh, hostel, the cheaper the price. And uh, the good thing about uh, Booking.com, meron silang option for no prepayment. Uh, at least kung hindi man ma-approvehan yung visa nyo, then you can cancel it anytime for free. Just make sure na uh, hindi nyo makalimutan i-cancel, guys. And um, pwede nyo siyang i-filter kung ano yung mga mas murang uh, hostel just within the city center. And uh, also, guys, I make sure na meron silang available na female dormitories para at least um, I'm comfortable enough na yung mga kasama ko is uh, mga babae din. So, I was lucky enough na meron akong nabook na mga female dormitories and then uh, single room then with a shared bathroom. Yun. So, um, what I did is I reserve it and then ginamit ko yung pay my card ko kasi kailangan ng credit card guys para ma-reserve mo yung uh, room. So, I use my PayMaya card para ma-reserve ko yung uh, room ko. Okay, so yun. Um, letter of invitation. Okay. So, if you have a sponsor, then you can um, provide a letter of invitation from your sponsor, guys. And uh, the format for the letter, you can download it dun sa um, Italian Visa link. Okay. Uh, document of identity, proof of citizenship, or uh, permit of stay from the inviting person. Again, kung may mga sponsor kayo. And if invited by relatives, uh, NSO documents to prove relationship. Ako, yung pinasa ko is yung birth certificate ko lang kasi wala naman akong sponsor. I'm gonna uh, sponsor my own trip. Okay. So, but if you have a uh, sponsor, guys, then you have to uh, submit yung PSA, birth certificate nyo, and also yung uh, birth certificate ng um, sponsor nyo, okay? And last on the list for uh, checklist for tourist visa requirements is yung uh, visa fee, okay? So, yun lang naman yung mga requirements or checklist for tourist visa, okay? Okay, so now that we know kung ano yung mga requirements needed, and isa dun sa mga requirements is yung um, application form. So, uh, let's go back to our set of questionnaires and that's number eight on our uh, set of questionnaires guys so how do you fill up the application form so ganito yung itsura niya 
Yan. So, on the upper right is you have to paste yung uh, photo nyo. And then, uh, make sure to put NA for those questions that are not applicable. Okay. So, number one is your surname. Number two, surname at birth. Number three, first name or given name. Number four, your date of birth. Number five, place of birth. Number six, country of birth. Number seven, current nationality. But if you have different nationality at birth, then you have to put it there. And number eight, uh, if you're male or female, so ako female, so yung naka-cross out. Um, number nine, marital status, so ako naka-cross out single. Number ten, in case of minors, um, you have to put the surname, first name, address of parental authority or legal legal guardian. So ako hindi naman ako minor, so NA. Eleven, national identity number, so wala naman tayong ganun, so NA. Number 12, type of travel document. So, ako, I only have ordinary passport. So, yun yung naka-cross out. Number 13, number of travel documents. So, yun yung uh, passport number nyo, guys. Number 14, uh, date of issue. Huwag okay, kailangan niyo yung passport nyo. Number 15, until uh, yung, va yung validity ng passport nyo. And then, number 16, issued by. Okay, so, ako nilagay ko, DFA Manila, Philippines. Number 17, applicant's home address and email address. Um, and then, your telephone number. Kung meron yung telephone number sa bahay, ilagay nyo. Uh, ako, nilagay ko lang yung mobile number ko. Number 18, residence in a country other than the country of current nationality. So, ako, wala naman. So, naka-no. But, uh, you can put yes if, uh, let's say, Filipino kayo, but residence na kayo ng, uh, let's say, Canada or Dubai, then you can put it there. And then, yung validity din, guys. Number 19, uh, current position. So, nilagay ko kung ano yung uh, current position ko. 20, employer and employer's address, telephone number. For students, name and address of uh, educational establishment. Number 21, a main purpose of your journey. So, ako, I will be there for uh, uh, as a tourist. So, tourism. Number 22, member states of destination. So, ano ba yung mga pupuntaan nyo? Ako nalagay ko is Spain, um, Italy, and France. Member state of first entry. So, multiple uh, countries yung uh, bibisitahin ko guys, but my first entry would be Spain. 24, number of entries requested. So, ako ay uh, only uh, request for uh, single entry. Uh, you can actually apply for two entries or multiple entries. Number 25, duration if the intended stay or transit. Ako, I indicated 12 days because I'm going to stay there for 12 days. 26, Schengen visa issued during the past three years. Ako, I don't have so no. But if, yet, but if you have, then you can cross yes and then make sure to put the uh, dates uh, availability. Uh, number 27, fingerprints uh, collected previously for the purpose of applying for a Schengen visa. So, ako, no, this is my first time, then um, no, you naka cross out. But if you have, then you can uh, answer yes, and then yung date. Number 28, entry permit for the final country of destination were applicable. So, ako, no, naka-NA lang yan. So, number 29, um, Intended date of arrival in the Schengen area. So, yung first thing you done sa Schengen area. Number 30, intended date of departure from the Schengen area. So, kung ano yung last thing you done. 31, surname and first name of the inviting person in the member states. If not applicable, name of the hotel or temporary accommodation in the member states. So, ako wala naman akong inviting person or sponsor. Um, I'll, I indicated there yung name nung uh, hostel, guys. So, I indicated there uh, yung dalawang um, pangalan ng hostel sa Italy. Kasi I will be staying the longest in Italy. So, yung hostel ko dun sa Rome and then yung hostel ko dun sa Venice. And then, uh, address and email of the inviting person or hotel or temporary accommodation. So, ang nilagay ko din is yung address nung hostel ko sa Rome and yung address ko din sa Venice and both their phone numbers. Number 32, name and address of the inviting company or organization, their phone number and telefax also. So, ako wala naman ako inviting person, um, naka-NA yon. So, number 33, cost of traveling and living during the applicant's stay is covered. So, dito yon. Um, 
a con kernels out ko by the applicant himself or herself. Okay. So, means of support is cash, because I'm gonna use cash, credit card, prepaid accommodation, yung prepaid accommodation ko through booking.com, and so far yun lang naman. But if you have sponsor, then you have to cross out this one by sponsor. Okay, and then just check kung ano yung means of support. Number 34, personal data of the family members who is uh, EU, EA, EEA, or CH citizen. So, ako wala, wala akong... Um, uh, family members na European don So, naka-NA lahat yan from 34 to 35. Okay. And then, at the very bottom, guys, uh, you will have to uh, indicate yung place uh, and date kung kailan nyo, kung saan at kailan nyo pinirmahan itong application nyo and your signature also. Okay. So, ganun yung pag-fill uh, up ng application form. So, very easy, guys. Alright. Number nine of our set of questionnaires, what happens on the day of your submission of visa application? So, uh, my tip guys, if you actually preferred uh, to schedule an appointment, then make sure to um, arrive uh, early, um, at least 15 to uh, 10 minutes before your scheduled appointment. Pero kung walk-in uh, applicant kayo, um, I suggest to apply early in the morning so you can avoid the crowd, guys. So, what happened ba? Um, ako, uh, when I arrived in uh, the VIA center, nasa second floor yung um, pag-submit na application, guys. If you're a walk-in applicant, pasok nyo doon, bibigyan kayo ng um, queue number, and then bibigyan kayo ng form. Uh, the first form is yung for SMS. Um, if you would like to uh, opt for um, SMS notification and yung delivery. So, ipipick up nyo ba or you preferred to yung passport nyo to be delivered on your preferred um, address. And then, yung second form is yung checklist uh, ng mga required uh, documents that you have to submit, guys. So, bibigyan kayo ng queue number and then you will be called out. An officer will check yung mga documents nyo dun sa mga checklist, guys. is check nyo kung meron ba kayong uh, nasubmit ng ganitong documents, kung kompleto ba. And then, uh, kung kompleto, um, kunin niyo yung documents nyo and then um, ilalagyan niyo dun sa parang uh, actually may lalagyan sila ng folder so you don't have to bring your folder and then kung meron namang kulang then uh, she or he will inform you kung ano yung mga kulang guys and then um, you have to sit down kasi meron pa silang i-assist na mga ibang applicants but you will be called out again for your biometrics so make sure na walang sugat yung mga daliri nyo walang kung ano-ano man yung mga uh, drawings dyan, and malinis para walang problema sa pagkuha ng biometrics. Yung nakaipipituran, biometrics lang. And then after that, kung okay na lahat doon sa second floor, you have to proceed on the third floor for your uh, payment, guys. So, good thing is, um, they accept uh, credit card uh, payment, guys. So, yun yung um, ginawa ko. I pay through uh, my credit card. And uh, take note to... Uh, Keep your receipt, guys. So, itago nyo yung resibo na i-issue ng VIA Center kasi sa pagkuha nyo na passport, kakailanganin nyo yun, guys. Okay? So, make sure to keep your receipt. Okay? Okay, so, number 10 uh, on our set of questionnaires. How long was the submission of application? So, ako dumating ako doon 9 and then natapos ako ng mga uh, 9.58. So, almost an hour, guys. So, my tip, uh, make sure to bring all the required documents, guys, for your visa application para walang aberya at matapos kayo ng mas maaga. Okay? So, yun. Number 11. How long before you can get the decision or your uh, passport back? Okay. So, regular processing, guys, is usually 15 days. But on my case, dahil first uh, visa ko na inapplyan to, um, natagalan, actually. So, what happened ba? Um, July 18, I submitted my visa application and then I waited f uh, for two weeks. So, walang follow-up pula sa um, embassy. But on August 2, that's Friday, I received actually a letter from the um, embassy. It was actually dated uh, July 29, guys. Pero na-receive ko siya August 2 and that's Friday. And doon sa letter ng um, embassy, guys, uh, actually, naka-indicate doon, 
please come to the to the uh, embassy immediately on Mondays to Wednesday at uh, 12 noon to 1 p.m. to discuss regarding your visa application. So, meron dong interview and clarification of the documents. And uh, I have to provide or bring confirmation of employment certificate with compensation and approved leave of absence from the company. And uh, they're um, asking guys if I can request from the company to send it dun sa um, in indicate nila na email with a kind attention to operator 7. And also, I have to bring original and clear photocopy of additional bank statements past 6 to 8 months of submitted uh, account and bank certificate with bank statements. Same as above from other personal or joint accounts and or stocks, investment or land titles. So, ako, kumuha ulit ako ng bank certificate from BPI and then yung sa bank statements ko, um, Prinent ko na lang dun sa uh, BPI mobile apps. And then, like I've said kanina, yung sa international credit cards ko, kasi yung pinasa ko lang is yung one month statement of uh, account, guys. So, mali pala. Kulang. So, uh, I provided six months um, statement of account ng mga uh, credit cards ko. And then, yung certificate title ng uh, property, guys, tong bahay. So, yon so, August 2, na-receive ko yung letter na yon, So, that was Friday. So, weekend na. Hindi na pwedeng ma-interview. So, there's no time for interview. And, uh, August 5, ay uh, requested sa HR namin na kung pwede, yung COE ko and yung LOE ko um, isubmit nila dun sa email na indicate ng um, embassy, guys. So, it's a personal request. And again, thank you, Miss Robin and Miss Leia sa pag-assist um, regarding about my COE and LOA. So, if you're watching, again, thank you po. Ayun, so, um, August 6, I had an interview to the Italian Embassy. So, pumunta ako doon. Um, sabi doon sa letter ng uh, embassy, I have to provide daw yung, yung letter na yun sa security, uh, security guard para makapasok ako doon sa visa section. And then, I surrendered my phone kasi bawal yung phone doon sa visa section. And then, I was given a number. Then, pagpasok ko doon, may nakalagay, um, smile, you are being seen on the camera. Ayan. So, smile ako. Mm, smile so, medyo kinakabahan ako kasi um, wala akong idea kung ano mangyayari, guys. So, pagpasok ko doon, medyo madami ng uh, mga applicants. And, um, pagpasok ko, merong four windows, guys. And, para, parang kang mangungumpisal kasi naka-enclose siya. Yung 1, 2, 3 na windows, doon yung may mga, tuma may mga nagtatawag and uh, kumukuha nung uh, passport nila. So, um, yung 4th na window, andun si Operator 7. So, nung tinawag yung uh, number ko, um, binigyan ako ni Operator 7 ng uh, two forms. First form, tinatanong doon yung uh, family uh, members, sino yung mother, father, um, if you have spouse and if you have children. So, tinatanong din doon yung occupation ng uh, mga family members mo and then yung present address nila. So, I fill up the form and then yung second form guys is yung about uh, educational um, attainment mo kung ano yung natapos mo, um, ano yung course, what year and then uh, sa baba yung work history nyo. So, ilagay nyo lahat doon kung Ano yung mga previous job nyo and then yung present job nyo and then yung uh, gross income nyo guys uh, from your previous job to your present job. So yun, I fill up the form and then uh, I submit it back to operator 7 and then talagang kinakabahan ako kasi akala ko um, wala ko idea kung ano yung mga tatanong and um, I thought uh, yung conversation namin is English. So, nahanda-handa ako na yung English ko, ba? But then, uh, super chill lang. Super chill lang yun. Very casual lang yung conversation namin. The first thing that he actually asked me is regarding about um, my work, yung job. Kung ano doon yung ginagawa ko sa trabaho ko. So, I explained kung ano yung tinata uh, uh, briefly kung ano yung ginagawa namin sa, sa work. And then, he asked me if uh, if I have sponsor, if it's gonna be a solo trip, mayroon ba akong relatives sa Europe, um, again, I, I answer na it's gonna be a solo trip, although mayroon akong um, relatives sa Europe, but um, I'm gonna sponsor my own trip. Ayun. 
And then, uh, binigyan niya ako ng piece of paper, guys. <laughs> one, bond, uh, one piece of uh, bond paper. And nagkaroon actually ng uh, impromptu na essay. So, sabi niya, ilagay ko daw doon kung plan, uh, paano ko uh, pinalo yung uh, trip ko, ano yung mga gagawin ko. Basically, uh, the reason why I would like to go to Europe. So, yun. Um, talagang yung impromptu essay niya yun, guys. Um, I wrote down ko ang talagang nasa nasa puso ko ay so bakit ba ako pupunta ng Europe ano ba yung plano ko doon how I plan for it so talagang indicate ko doon uh, by heart guys so medyo nilagyan ko rin ng konting drama para yung visa officer na uh, babasa noon talagang matatouch siya and hopefully ma-approve niya yung visa ko so yun um after that sinabit ko kay uh, operator 7 and then sabi niya Okay, so if there's other uh, question uh, or clarification from the embassy, we'll just call you. Okay, so, hindi na lang talagang, ngayon yun ay question, di ba? <laughs> ano, meron na another interview, ganun. So, again, um, sabi ko, okay. So, after noon, kasi naka-leave lang ako for um, uh, half day noon, nung time na yun. So, went back sa work. And then, I waited again uh, for a few weeks after that uh, interview, I thought after that interview, okay na. Meron ng decision yung, yung uh, visa ko. But then, I waited again uh, for a few weeks. August 13, I actually received a call from the embassy, guys. Uh, tumawag sa akin yung uh, embassy. Um, sabi nila, um, hindi pa sumasagot yung HR regarding about my employment verification. Kailangan na daw, um, uh, they will answer, uh, they will answer the email um, na sined nila. So, sabi ko, okay po, I will uh, follow up with uh, HR. So, I follow up with uh, our HR and again, thank you, Miss Leia. So, sabi ko, uh, kung pwede, sagutin nila yung email ng um, embassy regarding about my employment verification. So, yun. Um, I thought that week, guys, um, wala pa rin magiging result yung uh, visa ko. But, sobrang, sobrang stress na ako. Yung pag-submit ko actually ng visa application ko, sobrang bilis lang. Halos isang oras na ako. Pero yung, yung waiting <laughs> ng result ng uh, visa ko is doon talaga so, sobrang super na stress talaga ako doon. Kung I don't know if ma-approve ba o hindi. Ano ba, ano ba ang nangyayari. Yung, so, sobrang, ano yun, yung anxiety. Diba? But then, um, August 16, I actually uh, received um, an SMS. So, ito na yun. Yung SMS na binayaran ko, guys, na mahal. Isang SMS notification lang naman from VIA Center. So, ganito siya. Um, Hi, Miss Beverly Diamond Colon. Good day. This is from VIA Center of Italian Embassy. Please be informed that your passport has been released. It's now ready for pickup here at VIA Center. Nakalagay doon kung anong araw at anong oras. Saan sila nak saan sila uh, located and kindly bring the photocopy of your valid ID official receipt issued by us so again make sure to keep the receipt issued by the VIA center when you pay your visa if a representative will pick up authorization, uh, authorization letter and a photocopy of the valid ID of the applicant and also the representative notification pa lang to, SMS pa lang to, but again I was relieved kasi at last, ayan na yung decision. Although, wala pa akong idea, guys. Nobody knows, actually. Right, yung security guard or the VIA center of what uh, the result of your uh, visa application, guys. Kahit pigain nyo pa sila. The only person who knows is the visa officer who processed your uh, visa, guys. So, dito, um, it was sent Friday, August 16, at 5.51pm. So, wala na. Um, di ko na makukuha yung passport ko. So, imagine yung stress level ko, guys, na uh, ano ba, ano bang result ng visa ko. And then, finally, I re receive the SMS notification from the VIA Center. Pero Friday ko siya natanggap. So, I have to wait until the weekend is over para makuha ko yung passport ko and to know kung meron ba akong makukuhang visa or Schengen visa. Ma-approve ba yung Schengen visa ko, guys? So, yun. Um, August 19, 
I went to the uh, VIA center to collect my uh, passport. And actually, meron akong uh, visa reaction, guys. I took a video um, nung time na kinuha ko yung uh, passport ko. So, please watch. Nagali ako kanina sa VIA center and nakuha ko na yung passport ko. Here! Sinisilip ko siya kanina. It's just a birth certificate sa loob and then yung passport. So, let's check. Sana, uh, uh. Sana passage ko. So, yun guys, um, sobrang, ah, paano ba, sobrang saya, sobrang saya nung time na um, nakita ko mismo yung Schengen visa ko guys, na-approve siya. Um, medyo haggardo, <laughs> haggardo verzosa si Lola mo kasi galing pa ako niya ng VIA center and nagmamadali ako kasi nakalive lang ako for uh, two hours niyan. And, um, yun, nung... Actually, nung sinisilip-silip ko siya, um, nakalagay lang doon yung birth certificate ko and yung passport ko. And, um, hindi naman sa nagmamayabang, no? Pero, I can have a feeling na approve Kasi, sabi nila, if hindi approve yung um, visa nyo, uh, may mga documents din na include yung embassy. And, doon sa documents na yon nakalagay doon kung ano yung mga uh, reason, bakit uh, denied yung visa nyo. And sinisilip-silip ko siya, wala naman. Wala namang ibang paper doon na included other than the birth certificate and then yung passport ko. So, pero of course, um, I don't wanna be too confident din, di ba? Kasi baka mali palang passport nakalagay doon, hindi pala sa akin, di ba? So, nung uh, nakita ko kung sinong birth certificate na nakalagay doon and akin naman talaga and yun nga, yung nakita ko na yung passport ko and talagang yung mukha ko nakalagay doon and din yung Schengen visa ko. So, for once guys, it felt like it's the most rewarding moment of my life para akong nanalo sa loto. Kung ganun man yung feeling na nanalo sa loto. So, sobrang saya guys. Finally, I'm going to Europe. Diba? Yun. Aww. Okay, so once you receive your passport guys, um, with your uh, valid Schengen visa, so, paano ba natin siya babasahin or interpret? So, ganito yung itsura niya. So, yung picture na pre-novide sa application form nyo, yun yung magiging uh, photo nyo dito sa visa nyo. And then, valid for uh, state Schengen. So, uh, Schengen state. And, valid from, sa akin nakalagay, October 13, 2019 until November 8, 2019. So, I can uh, enter the Schengen States, guys, anytime from October 13 to November 8. Pero, yung duration of stay ko, which is here, is 12 days. Okay? So, 12 days lang ako allowed doon sa Schengen State, uh, even though yung uh, validity ng uh, Schengen ko is from October 13 to November 8. So, let's say, Um, I, you enter on uh, November 1 and you have 12 days of stay pero yung validity ng visa nyo is hanggang uh, November 8 um, you have to leave the Schengen guys, Schengen area so let's say yung duration of stay ko is 12 days and I entered um, October 14 then I have to leave on October 25 even though yung validity ng Schengen ko or Schengen visa ko is 
on November 8. Okay, so you have to consider kung ilang days yung duration of stay nyo and then yung validity ng uh, visa nyo guys. So at first, pero medyo nalilito ako nito nung una. But it, I, I actually research kung paano siya basahin. And then yung type of visa is C. Number of entries is single lang. Uh, issued in Manila. And nakalagay doon kung kailan yung um, it was issued. And then yung number of uh, passport ko. And the name also. Yung name ng uh, applicant. And remarks. Nakalagay turismo. Yan, for tourism guys. So yun. That's how you uh, read your Schengen visa guys. Again, make sure to um, check yung validity ng passport nyo, kung tama ba, and then yung duration of stay. Make sure na match siya dun sa uh, visa na in-apply nyo, guys. Okay? And then, aside from the Schengen uh, visa nyo, guys, meron ding uh, is a staple yung um, embassy uh, na notice. So, nakalagay dito, the visa holder at the time of his entry at the border must present passport bearing a valid visa at the request of the immigration authorities. So, doon sa immigration, guys, kakailanganin nyo yung mga necessary documents such as yung um, uh, accommodation nyo, yung airfare, uh, hotel reservation, invitation letters, um, trip airfare, round trip airfare, disposable income such as yung cash, traveler's check, international credit cards, and also health insurance. So make sure na you keep all those uh, uh, important documents, guys. Para pag tinanong kayo dun sa immigration, you can provide it. Okay? And the last question, guys, finally. Last question na, no? Medyo mahaba-haba na tong pag-uusap na to. How much did you spend? Okay, so magkano ba yung ko just for the visa? So number one is yung uh, flight reservation through uh, Gazil Travel and Tours. So like I've said... Um, I avail the regular processing of 990 pesos. And then, number two, yung bank certificate. So, umasas ako doon na ng uh, 400 pesos kasi I was interviewed by the embassy. So, kumuha ulit ako ng bank certificate. And sa BPI, guys, 200 pesos per bank certificate. So, two copies yung kinuha ko. So, that's a total of 400 pesos. And then, yung BPI statement of account history ko, that's 50 per page. So, mabot siya ng two page. So, two pages. Uh, that's uh, 100 pesos. And then, number four is yung travel insurance. So, gaya na sabi ko, napili ko yung MAFRE travel insurance kasi mas mura siya among all the um, travel insurance guys, accredited. So, that's 29 days. Kasama na doon yung, kasama na doon yung 15 days um, allowance beyond uh, travel period. And that's 200 or 2,202 pesos. Okay. Um, number five is yung career service for no biometric required. So, remember I told you na merong letter na nanggaling mula sa embassy for um, interview and clarification of documents guys. So, pinayaran ko yung career service na yon for 215 pesos. So, may bayad yon. And, uh, yung visa for short term, uh, valid for 90 days. Um, that's 3,519 pesos or 60 euros. And, yung service or handling fee ng VIA center is 1,350 pesos. And, uh, I, I also availed for SMS notification na isang isang notification lang naman, or isang text lang naman mula sa VIA Center, um, nagko-cost siya ng 100 pesos, guys. So, sana sinaban na lang nila para pasalot na lang ako dito. So, all in all, guys, kumasos ako ng 8,876 pesos okay, for my Schengen visa. Okay, so this is actually not uh, included dun sa mga set of questionnaires natin, guys. But I just wanna share kung ano yung uh, lesson na... Um, I learned from this experience, guys. So, the first thing is, be patient. So, gaya na sabi ko, yung pag-submit ko ng visa application ko, guys, sobrang dali lang. Um, almost one hour lang ako doon sa VIA center, natapos na ako agad. Pero, yung pag-antay ko ng result ng visa, guys, sobrang, doon ako na-stress. Yung, yung stress level, guys, sobra. 
and yung anxiety talaga. But then, I, I actually tried to um, understand na ginagawa lang naman ng embassy yung trabaho nila. And they're very strict, but at the same time, I felt na talagang um, they really guide me on the process din, kahit papano. Kasi they interviewed me, kasi they just really want to make sure kung totoo ba talaga yung mga sinasabit kong documents. And um, they call me up, um, they inform me na hindi pa uh, sumasagot yung um, HR regarding about my employment verification. So, dun pa lang guys, narealize ko na um, kung medyo matagal na sila nagaantay regarding about yung employment verification uh, from our HR, dun pa lang pwede na nilang um, i-deny yung um, visa ko. But then, no, um, they did not do that. Um, instead, they call me up and inform me na kung pwede follow up ko sa HR to verify yung uh, employment verification ko para mabigyan na, na nila ng decision yung um, visa ko, guys. So, somehow, they're very strict, but at the same time, I felt na talagang uh, they, they really guide me uh, somehow dun sa uh, pag-apply ko ng visa. Kasi I read a blog, guys, na one of the uh, embassies which has a uh, highest rate of uh, visa refusal or visa rejection is the Italian embassy. But based on my experience, guys, um, yes, I can really attest that they're really strict. But as long as you can convince them na uh, totoo ba yung mga sinasubmit mo na application, then or totoo ka ba talaga sa pag-apply mo ng visa, then there's really, there's no grounds for denying your visa, guys. Okay, so... Uh, yun, uh, be patient lang kasi nga, sabi nila, patience is a virtue. So, yun, uh, try to understand na ginagawa lang ng embassy yung um, trabaho nila on checking your um, application thoroughly. And with that, um, that goes to my second uh, lesson that I've learned. Be honest, guys. So, be honest um, sa pag-apply ng uh, visa guys, uh, be honest on your application, um, yung mga documents na sinasubmit nyo, make sure na totoo kayo doon sa mga documents na sinasubmit nyo. And uh, that leads to my third um, lesson guys, uh, be considerate. Gaya nga nasabi ko, uh, be honest on your application kasi if uh, you, you will do fraud, then yung embassy, mas magiging strict sila sa pag uh, check ng uh, or pag-process ng visa and maapektuhan din yung um, other applicants uh, who will uh, apply for visa kasi iisipin ng embassy na baka ginagawa rin ng ibang applicants to. So, be considerate din sa other uh, applicants. And lastly, trust God process guys. So, ako, uh, I really prayed um, every day, every night na sana talaga i-approve niya yung visa ko na sana he will touch the heart of the visa officer na magpa-process ng visa ko uh, para ma-approve. And yun guys, don't forget to pray din. Tana. Kasi sabi nga nila, nasa tao ang gawa, nasa Diyos ang awa. Okay? okay? So that would be all guys. I hope you've learned uh, a thing or two um, on this vlog and I hope I didn't uh, bore you guys. And if you have questions, just make sure to comment it down below. Um, if I have time, I'll try to um, answer it. And uh, most probably, if you're gonna watch this vlog, I'm on my way there, or baka kagaling ko lang. I'm gonna uh, do a separate, or I'm gonna make a separate uh, vlog regarding about my UK visa, how I apply, how I prepare for my UK visa also, and a different vlog regarding about um, how much ba yung naging total expenses ko on my entire uh, Europe trip para you can have an idea also ngayon pa lang um, magkano yung isa-save nyo para you too can also make your Europe trip a dream come true di ba? ayun so um, make sure to hit the like button if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe okay so yun na guys um, let's all shine bright like a diamond sabi nga ni Rihanna di ba? so thank you all for watching and Bye-bye. Bella, ciao. Bella, ciao.